For any food lover, Skiji Market in Tokyo is an ultimate culinary paradise. In this video, I'm gonna take you on an extreme one day Japanese street food tour and show you some of the best things to eat at Skiji Market, including a huge oyster and some off the beaten path local hole in the walls. So keep watching this video and get ready to devour some of the most incredible Japanese street food in Tokyo. The first thing that I'm gonna eat this morning, uh, it's not it's not seafood at all, but it's one of the most popular. It's like a it's like the Skiji Power Breakfast, and it's one of the most legendary things to eat at Skiji Market. Oh wow, this looks amazing. The first stop on this Skiji food tour today is a, a legendary stall and she serves a miso based stew with all types of, of innards and organ meat. And unfortunately the auntie uh, doesn't allow any photos. You grab your bowl, you can come out here and, and stand. They have a couple tables, standing tables on the side of the road. She has one of those classic, what looks like eternal bubbling pots of of organ meat and you can smell that miso aroma. Okay, I'm just gonna lift this bowl to my face. There's definitely some jiggly bits in here. There are some intestines, there might be some tongue. I don't even know what else is in here, but it, it smells, it smells like pure comfort, like grandma's comfort. Mmm. Oh. I got, a, I got a definite mixture of organ meat in that bite. It almost looks like it's gonna be like a, a spicy style curry, but you can really taste the miso flavor in that. It's like reduced down miso stock. So it has, slight, has a slight bean paste flavor to it. And then just wrapped up with their, those like incredibly soft, tender intestines and, and organ meat. If you like organ meat, wow. This is a, this is a hearty breakfast here. Oh yeah, this is exactly what I needed to finish this bowl off. Oh, that's a little gelatinous. It's really good though. If you didn't know it was organs, you would just think it's like some very tender gelatinous cuts of meat. It goes great with hot rice. That's tasty. This place just got really packed and busy. Miso organ stew. Right, that was a, a very hearty way to start the morning, but that's that's the energy you need when you're working at Skiji Market and you're you're moving fish and giant things around. You need that energy. But right now we're walking around the outer, this is called the Outer Skiji Market. Uh, and this is a place where they have lots of restaurants. You'll find lots of Japanese street food here. And then I love how it's mixed in with uh, there are some fresh produce vendors as well as lots of fish sashimi vendors uh, But then if you go on the inside of the market, which is called inner skiji market That's where the actual where you'll you'll be able to buy the real seafood Hello. What is the difference? It's all the same? Oh, same. Oh, okay. Uh, just one please. Hi. Thank you. Arigato. I saw the fresh sea urchin, which in Japanese is called uni, and oh, I could not resist passing this stall by. It's within this alley, and they just have some freshly cut spiny uni. Oh man, and just that gold on the inside. Oh, and you can just see, look at that texture. You can see how creamy and how, it, yeah, it's just gonna be creamy. No doubt about it. Oh. Oh, all the freshness. Oh, you don't even need to chew, it just slides down. Oh, and it's so like, that's like ice cream creamy. Mm. It just goes down so easily. That pudding, that sea urchin pudding. 
Thank you, sorry. Another one of the famous street food stalls to eat at at Tsukiji Market is an eel stall. And uh, eel is a, is a real delicacy in Japan. It can be pretty pricey. Uh, so they have these little sample skewers of grilled eel. And I don't know if I don't know if you saw, but when he when he handed me two skewers, one of them actually we had a little accident, and one of them like literally just slipped off the skewer. That's how that's how buttery soft it's going to be. That just that just increased my my appetite. But it's going to be it's going to be soft and buttery. You can just see how oily that is, just glistening in the morning sunshine here. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, it's butter. It's just so creamy. We've got like a, a little bit of salty, slightly sweet sauce all over it. It's a glaze. Um, and then that just has like a that roasted, slightly, slightly burnt flavor to it. That is absolutely melt in your mouth. This is my kind of a popsicle. The butteriness of that eel is just lingering in my mouth. But I am coming up on another stall here and I want to get one. They have some corn fritters and I think some type of fish cake, fish cake fritters as well here. Next up, this is a stall that does all sorts of fish cake and fish paste. Uh, a lot of them, some of them looked Dried. Some of them looked grilled, and they have a whole cabinet full of different fish cakes. Uh, but one of their most well-known treats is this uh, another another popsicle-looking looking delight. Uh, this is I think it's fish cake, fish paste, uh, which is then covered in it's just completely caked in corn, and then I'm actually not sure if it's fried or or what, but it's like a it looks like a little yellow ice cream bar. Oh wow, it's like, there's just corn mixed within. I thought, I thought the corn would just be covering the outside, but it's, it's really mixed within. And then the, the fish cake inside, it's kind of spongy, and it's not really fishy at all. It's really sweet from the sweet corn. So really the fish cake actually just sort of acts to hold together all that corn. It's just packed in there with corn. This could almost be considered a a sweet snack because that sweet corn is unbelievably sweet. Hi. Hi. <laughs> These little walkway alleys around the outer Skiji market are really a food lover's dream come true, a paradise because it really is a mixture of both uh, street food things to eat, ready-made things to eat, and then lots of fresh ingredients as well. And you can you can buy just almost all Japanese food products you can imagine, and it's it's quite a quite a superb mix that will make any food lover excited. Can I have one of the, the really big ones? Big, big one? Yes, please. Thank you. Arigato. Arigato this is by far the most giant oyster I've ever seen in my life. And the most expensive oyster I've ever bought in my life. But it is huge. This is definitely not a one biter. This is a this is like they get they actually give you two toothpicks because this is like a it's like a two-person oyster. Just check out this is just insanely gigantic. I wouldn't even if I if I saw this from the outside, I wouldn't even recognize that it's an oyster. It has like a it's it's not just like one of those flat shellfish looking oysters, but this look at that depth on the bottom of that shell. This is like a it's probably like a circular oyster. This thing is huge and meaty and just gigantic. Oh, oh, it's so meaty. Look at the size of this. Oh, wow. I'm honestly kind of contemplating the one bite, but no, I don't think 
this should not be attempted. This oyster should not be attempted in one bite. That's just like a mouthful of the sea. Oh, it's like it's like a cross between butter and jelly, and just so so seafoody. But that is a a mouthful of the ocean. Wow, that is that is absurd. That oyster is literally spreadable. You could you could spread that onto a piece of bread. It literally dissolves, similar to to if you were to if you were to take a bite of ice cream, and how that just sort of melts on the tip of your tongue. That is seafood at its finest. Oh man, that's insane. Mm. Oh. With that one oyster, I feel like I just ate the entire sea. Wow, that was that was for sure the best oyster experience, single oyster that I've ever I've ever experienced in my life. And they have a selection of different oysters there, all different sizes and uh, priced according to size. But that giant, giant oyster. Oh, that that just deserved a moment of silence. Even though that that's that's one oyster. She put on a little bit of sauce, which I didn't even taste. Um, but that that really sums up Japanese food. The purest of the best, with little seasoning, but just focusing on the ingredients. That is that is Japanese food for me. A lot of people come to Skiji Market to eat with with, with a priority on their mind to eat one of the most popular, one of the most famous Japanese foods. And they have a lot of a lot of places to choose from. But I'm walking over to a place now that hopefully uh, yeah, let's let's check it out. I've been scouting out this restaurant and it's in the in the back streets, a real some real local back streets of Skiji Market. And I I found this tiny little alley. Where'd that alley go? Oh here it is. Here it is over here. And yeah, this is a this is a tiny little alley, but this is the coolest route to get to this sushi restaurant. Come on, Ying. I'm sure this is the way. Hey Micah! And you get back into this neighborhood here. And this is the house where the sushi restaurant is in. Right here. Yeah, they're open. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I am so thrilled that we found this place. If you had a Japanese grandpa, this is what the, the type of sushi you would get. This is just a little house place. This is definitely the most classic heritage, just awesome, loving. Yeah, you, you can feel the love in this place. This is like a classic little house in the back of the outer Skiji market. And they make just, this is just perfect looking sushi. And we got that we got one large plate of sushi and then one the omakase, so the, the chefs back there just uh, decided what to what to make and then one uh, sushi sashimi bowl chirasi don. Wow, it looks so colorful and so you can it's just oozing with freshness. Okay, I'm gonna pour some soy sauce. And this is such a beautiful, colorful plate of sushi. It's absolutely stunningly gorgeous. This just looks like family style sushi. I'm gonna start with this one, which I think is medium, medium fatty tuna. Just look at that. Just get a close up on that. That is, that is pretty beyond belief. You can see how that fish is so soft and tender that it's almost, you could actually just like, you could, you could easily just pull those apart. It's they're like little, little scales of fish. Oh, that's insane. <laughs> oh, that fish just, just disintegrates. Oh, that's like a, that is so pure. Oh, and it's room temperature. 
the rice just sort of blends with the fish, and that is outrageously fresh. I'm sure they got that fish right from the from the market, which is just a stone's throw away. And you put, actually put quite a lot of wasabi within that piece of sushi, underneath the fish. And that, that is immaculate. All right. Mm. Oh, that has a crunch to it. Uh, kind of like a, I think it's some type of a shellfish. Mmm. Mmm. That is stunning. This really just tastes like, like a, like an uncle or grandpa is serving you sushi. Wow, that is absolutely incredible. Next up, I'll take a bite of the, of the bowl. Oh. It just melts your heart. It's the purest, the purest, the best. It has a very light, um, kind of fishy miso broth flavor to it with those green onions or leeks in there. Light, light and really good. Mm. That's delicious as well, which is a thin layer of fish on that one. Follow with ginger. Oh. It's so complimentary. Whenever I eat sushi, I could down like a whole pile of that pickled ginger. Mm. Bite after bite of just extreme freshness. Oh. That's another, a, a winner of a melt in your mouth bite. This is just absolutely amazing. I'm just, I'm just in sushi awe right now. My final bite, my final piece of sushi came way too fast. Oh, that is some of the freshest, some of the best, like love, love in the sushi tasting that I've ever had in my life and I'm down to that final bite. I just have this little tradition where I often save the, the fatty tuna belly for my last bite just because that is, that is the flavor that you want to linger in your mouth for as long as possible. And I, I don't even want to use my chopsticks for this one. I actually, I have this urge to just touch it. And I'm going so that the, the, the fish touches my tongue first. Moment of silence. That is Japan in one bite. Oh, that is absolutely stunning. Okay, coming out of here now. Wow, this. Arigato. That, that has just given me a new ultimate perspective on family sushi. Oh, that is, that is literally like if you were to have a, a Japanese grandfather and you went over to his house, he just bought fish from the fish market, he sliced it up, made sushi. That is the type of experience that that just was, and that was mind-blowing. I actually found that restaurant just by scanning through Google Maps, and when I found that place, then I looked up, the, I, I saw the photo of the dining room with that one singular table, that old-style looking table, and just from seeing the table, I knew that's the sushi restaurant we needed to eat at when, you came, when, when we came here. And it just, it was beyond my expectations. From here, we're gonna go walk around the inner market for a little bit, see some fish and some seafood. Uh, but we're here, in the, it's the middle of the morning now, almost noon. You gotta be careful though, so you don't get run over by one of these little trolleys. We really did get here too late for the fish market. There's just about, Nothing left. Almost everyone has packed up, uh, but that's okay. We got I got I got a little carried away eating in the outer market before even making it here. But that's okay. I, I visited the the fish market the last time I came here. Uh, but if you want to if you want to visit the fish market, you better you got to come in the morning. Uh, even like seven or eight a.m. is good to come, or even earlier than that. And you'll see some gigantic tuna and some seafood like you've never seen before, ever.
there's this one section of the outer market where you come and you see everybody who's standing around has an ice cream cone in hand. Let's have an ice cream cone. Hi, Gummy. How are you? They have a bunch of different flavors, but one of the one of the most common is the matcha, the green tea powder, and it is it looks really kind of like a fluffy ice cream. Mm. It's definitely green tea. And then something about Japanese ice cream is you can really really taste the the milky flavor of it. It's it's really like it's really strong milky in a good way. Mm, it's very rich, it's very creamy, and mm, it has a strong green tea flavor. Green tea flavor did. That's good. It's actually very good. It's called, is it called silk ice? I think it's called silk ice. Mm. Yeah. Ice cream is good for sure. Hi, how are you? Okay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We'll see you on YouTube. Thank you. Next up, right on this corner, right across from that ice cream place, is some of the one one of the again, it's not a seafood dish. It has nothing to do with seafood, but it is one of the most common popular street food, Japanese street food snacks to eat at Skiji Market, this outer market. And it is a uh, an egg omelet. Oh yeah, he just looks like he knows how to how to handle an omelet. And you can see how popular this snack is. They're just dishing them out. There are probably four or five places that serve Japanese omelets here and it's it's a very very common street food snack that you see almost everyone walking around eating especially on this on this row here uh, and it's pretty cool at this place you can see them making it um, he has the square pans and he folds up the egg it's really an art to make this Japanese omelet and if you look at it closely it almost looks like a like a block of, of of a type of cheese with those air bubbles in it, but it's it's dense at the same time. This little custom little plastic thing is is pretty cool to eat with. It's like a little knife with a with a poker on it. So you can cut off a piece, stab, and eat. Oh, look at the look at the airiness of that. You know, I just can't fully get into the Japanese omelet. I I, I love Japanese food. I love the seafood, but the, the it's like kind of oddly sweet for me, Japanese omelets. And, and I, I knew this going into this piece, I've had it before, it's just not my, not my personal favorite thing. That being said, it is, it is kind of good. This one is kind of custardy, it's very juicy, and it is like a, it's almost like an egg custard, but an but a omelet. Yeah, you know, I can definitely appreciate it, and I like how they make it, but this is just not my thing. He is selling some squid jerky. I'll take it all. Squid jerky. Mm. Oh yeah, that's good. That's like leathery squid. Kind of, kind of sweet and salty. Hello. Hello. How much is one thousand yen? Okay. I'll have one, please. Thank you. Another Japanese street food seafood snack that I could not resist is a it's a it's a scallop which is diced up and then put back in the shell and then he adds a variety of different seafood to it and then he blow torches it. That's the that is the key to this. And I ate here a couple years ago when I was at Skiji Market and it was probably the one of the my favorite street food snacks that I had. Um, but last time I had a little surprise. It was during winter. 
Uh, now it's summer in Japan. It was during winter and I had this little creamy surprise that was uh, turned out, I didn't know what it was when I was eating it, but it turned out to be to be cod sperm, which is a delicacy in Japan. I had no idea what I was eating then, but that it was included on this shell. But since it's summer and I don't think it's season now, he's included a few other things. He included some uni, which I'm not gonna complain about, and then he included a little crab claw. Oh, that's just scorched uni. All the sea urchin, all the creaminess. Okay, this is a piece of the, and, and, and just look at the size of this shell. Look at the, look at that scallop below there. It just is so meaty and so, oh, it's gonna be amazing. Oh, oh wow, look at that. That's like a cream topping. The combination of that scallop, which is so sweet, and then that slightly bitter seafoody sea urchin with that caramelized crust on top. I think he always serves a, a scallop, but then it's kind of a it's kind of a seasonal mixture of seafood that he adds on top of it. So you might get lucky with some cod sperm or with a little crab claw. I got a crab claw this time. Oh wow. Just look at the size of this scallop. And look at that. Whoa, what is that? I think that's part of the scallop. Wow. That's like scallop and uh, what is that? I feel like I'm starting to, to turn into a, a seafood right now. Really exceptionally good, extremely fresh, good quality. Uh, you know, everything everything is really good, but if you could just choose one one seafood treat, Japanese street food snack. That might be the one because it's, it's a jumble. It's a seafood jumble. And then the way he, he, it's sort of raw, but it's sort of cooked at the same time. And the way, the way he blow torches it, that's a good one. That's a, that's a must eat. We're walking over to eat at our final restaurant. And this is gonna wrap up the, the food tour of Skiji Market. Can I have uh, one ten, ten dan and one uh, tempura? Okay, for the final stop on this Skiji Market food tour, uh, we are at this is a this is a whole strip of kind of like almost like little shop house restaurants. Um, they're some of the most popular and most well-known sushi restaurants in this area. But I've already had amazing sushi, and so I'm gonna end this food tour by eating some fresh tempura. And this is just a really small restaurant. Uh, it has a sliding door in the front and these little little tiny stool chairs. Cool little place. Um, and it, as, as soon as you step in here, you can smell the aroma of the frying oil and you can hear it cooking in the back, and that bubbling oil sound. Oh, green tea. Oh, that's soothing. Arigato. Oh, wow. That is gorgeous. Oh, it's still, it's still crackling. It's still sizzling. They do not make your tempura until you order it, so it is hot and piping fresh. They take their time to make it like perfectly and just fry it very, very fresh, so it's just, oh, oh yeah. You, you, you do wait for it and it's gonna be worth it. Uh, Ying and I got two different different sets to share. Uh, one is the, the tendon, which is a, it's a rice bowl uh, with an assortment of tempura on top, and they also put the sauce all over it already, so there's no dipping sauce. And that is, that is beautiful, but then also we got just a set of tempura, um, just the, the mix. There's shrimp, there's fish, there's some vegetables. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. Oh, look at that shrimp on top there. Oh, look at that. Okay, this has to be my first bite right here. Oh, absolute sensational. First of all, starting with a very fresh shrimp, and then it's like muscular in texture. That batter, it's crispy and I don't know, it's, 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 it's just it's drenched in that sauce, which is a little bit salty and a little bit sour and a little bit sweet. Oh, that's delicious. Absolutely sensational. Oh, the rice. Mm. The rice is amazing because it's, it's soaked up a little bit of that oil and that sauce. Oh, what a... What a fried treat this is. What a crunchy treat this is. Okay, next up for, um, could this be eggplant? I think it's eggplant. 
Oh, it's hot. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's eggplant. And it's just like melt in your mouth creamy. We also got a plate of tempura. And there's some shrimp on there, but I, want, I really want to try the fish. Check that out. That's just a, a butterfly cut piece of fish, then deep fried. What I love is that nothing. Nothing is over deep fried, you know. The the ingredients underneath that batter layer just remain perfect. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. mm. That's so light and like fluffy. Oh delicious. It's a little bit of a flaky, flaky fish on the inside. Let me taste some of those pickles. Mm. Nice and crisp. Thank you. Bye. Okay, I'm down to the final bite. I saved the shrimp. This is going to be my final bite on this Skiji Japanese food tour. And what a tour it's been. I want to let it relax. I want to let it relax in there for a little bit. All right. Here it goes, final bite. And on that note, I am tapping out. I'm, I'm done. That was an amazing Skiji Market Japanese food tour. And we are the last ones in here. They are closed for lunch. What a way to end this food tour. This place is legendary for their tempura as well. That brings us to the end of this Skiji Market Japanese food tour extreme. It, it, there's been so much good food. I'll include everywhere that I ate, uh, the whole list in the description box below. And also you can check out the blog post for all the details. Uh, every, the, the, link, the links will be in the description box below, but really you can come to Skiji Market. There's so much to see. There's so many street food snacks to try, especially if you love to eat seafood, of course. Uh, it, it, it's, it's where your dreams will come alive. It's an amazing place to visit when you're in Tokyo, one of the greatest fish markets in the world, and the restaurants surrounding are also impressive. I am, I'm stuffed, <laughs> and I, that was amazing. So I want to say a big thank you to you for watching this video. Uh, please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Also, I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. And if you're not already subscribed, click subscribe now. I'm going to be sharing lots more food and travel videos with you. Thank you again for watching and goodbye from Skiji Market in Tokyo, Japan. Goodbye, thanks for watching.